why are all volcanoes or why are volcanoes all over the globe suddenly shooting giant clouds of ash into the air? Let's see if the question can be answered. I just shared with you scripture. Clearly, we're living in the end times. These are all signs of the times. It says there certainly hasn't been a lack of seismic activity so far in 2020. Just a few days ago, there was a horrific earthquake swarm that Puerto Rico is currently experiencing. More than 1,000 earthquakes have rattled Puerto Rico so far. And as you will see, it was just hit by another very large earthquake. Right now, though, volcanic eruptions have taken center stage. In particular, a massive eruption in the Philippines is making headlines all over the world. But what most people don't realize is that several other volcanoes have also blown their tops in spectacular fashion within the past week. Suddenly, volcanoes all over the globe are shooting giant clouds of ash miles into the air. For instance, last Tuesday, one of the most important volcanoes in Alaska shot hot ash 25,000 feet into the air. This particular volcano, called Shishaldin Volcano, erupted at 5 in the morning Tuesday. The Alaska Volcano Observatory announced and sent up an initial ash cloud to 19,000 feet. Clouds initially obscured the mountain, but satellite imagery confirmed that the ash cloud or, you know, you know the, um, the ash cloud was confirmed according to the U.S. Geological Survey. You also had seismicity diminishing for a few hours, but then it, it, it actually increased again. During the increase, the volcano spewed an ash cloud to 25,000 feet. The observatory announced the later eruption increased the volume of ash as well. So we're talking about 5,280 feet in a mile. And so, uh, again, that ash cloud went five miles high. Over, again, over 25,000 feet. That's spectacular to me. Then on Thursday, Mount Popocatépetl, uh, and I, I don't mean to mess that name up, is a very large volcano in Mexico. It also exploded, shooting hot ash nearly four miles into the sky. Mexico's Popocatépetl uh, volcano burst to life on Thursday in a spectacular gush of lava and clouds of ash that hurled incandescent rock about 20,000 feet into the sky. The dramatic explosion of the active stratovolcano, a little over 40 miles southeast of Mexico City, was captured on video by Mexico's National Center for Disaster Prevention. Meanwhile, down in South America, the Sabancaya volcano in Peru just shot a plume of volcanic ash approximately 24,000 feet into the air. Folks, these are clearly huge eruptions happening just within the past seven days. Explosive activity continues. Volcanic Ash Advisory Center uh, Buenos Aires warned about a volcanic ash plume that rose up to us uh, again to an estimated 24,000 feet uh, of altitude or flight level 240 and is moving at 15 uh, KTS in, in the south direction. But hardly anyone is paying any attention to what just took place in Peru because of what just happened in the Philippines. Also on Sunday, just as I shared with you, the Tao volcano roared to life and it's being reported that the eruption sent steam, ash, and pebbles up to six to nine miles into the sky. Can you imagine that? How large are these massive eruptions? How fascinating, how spectacular, how terrible. Folks, these are clearly signs of the times. The Lord is speaking through the mountain. It reminds me of, 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 of the book of Exodus. It reminds me when the children of Israel, the Hebrew children, were so afraid to look at the mountain, Mount Sinai. They were afraid of the presence of the Lord, and Moses had to be there. Mount Sinai was a very active mountain, and it could easily represent a volcano. It had pillars of smoke that came out. The Lord was there. And, and, and make no mistake about it, the Lord is speaking again. He's roaring these volcanoes to life. Uh, he's, he's, he, he is, he is um, you know, the ring of fire again is, is being lit up. It's, it's on fire. It's become very active. That is the Lord speaking. That is labor pains in the last days. The Bible is, uh, you know, the, the Bible tells us, the word of God tells us that the earth is moaning and groaning and laboring for the revealing of the sons of God. Again, my question to you is, are you saved? Are you a son of God? Are you a daughter of God? Are you a child of God? Have you submitted and surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Have you prayed today? Have you asked Jesus to take over your life? Have you submitted every part of your life to him? Do you have a relationship with him? Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Folks, again, we're living in the last days. 
The day of the Lord is at hand. The second return of Jesus Christ is at hand. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 3. I want to encourage each and every one of you to read the book of Revelation, starting in chapter 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is all talking about Jesus. It's all talking about, uh, you know, the one who was and who is and who is to come, the Almighty. And of course, his second return. He is coming. The earth is speaking. The earth is preaching for crying out loud. Are we listening? Do you have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying? Let it be that you do. And if you don't, Father God, please help them to receive, help them to receive the gift of salvation so that they can be born again. Because when you're born again, that's how you are able to have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And, and you know, of course, if you're not born again, you're able to still receive salvation through the mercy of God. The angels of the Lord are working overtime. It is a work of the Holy Spirit to, uh, you know, to bring you to the goodness of God so that you can repent. Let it be that you repent today in the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Make me born again. Forgive me of my sins. I, 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 I surrender my entire life to you. I confess that I need you. And, 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 and please write my name in your book. I, I, I give you my life. Give Jesus your life. There is no other way to, to, there is no other way to salvation. There is no other way to salvation. He's coming again very soon. He'll write your name in his book and this will be a whole new start of a new life. You'll be a new creation in Christ. All things will pass away. All things will become new. All things will become of God now. And, and even though we're living in the last days, even though we're living in the end times, even though we're right there at the midnight hour, folks, understand that the Lord says, I will do a new thing. He will still do a new thing. And he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. Until next time, may you all be richly blessed, stay safe, and please acknowledge the Lord and his love for you. It's his perfect love that casts out all fear. God bless you. Bye-bye. Happy New Year 2020. This is Evangelist Anita Fuentes bringing to you the first fruit offering of 2020. You know, Exodus chapter 22, verse 29 tells us, you shall not delay to offer from the fullness of your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. Exodus chapter 34 verse 26 also tells us the best of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 23 tells us, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. We here at Emoaf Church and Open Your Eyes People is honored to offer yet again the first fruits offering this time for the year 2020. What does it mean to place your first fruit here at Emoaf Church and Open Your Eyes People? Understand that placing your first fruit in the first 31 days of the new year signifies that God, His kingdom, and His will is first in your life. That the love of the Lord in your heart is the same as His, as his souls for the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that those who win souls are wise. As you give your first fruits towards this truth, your presses will not delay to fill you to overflow. Your harvest will reap. Your house will abound with blessing and your ground will yield bountifully. And most importantly, it will prove that you belong to Christ. Now, please understand that this is a very holy offering that we do here at Open Your Eyes People and Moaf Church and that the first fruits offering must be without blemish. Now this demands two very important things. Number one, that you be a very cheerful giver. And number two, that you give your very best. Now understand that your very best is not how much you give, but how you give. Did you give from the heart of your father? A heart full of love, peace, and joy. If not, it's better for you to even abstain from giving, for it will not even be received before the throne room of God. Understand that this is how we receive all offerings towards the work of this end time ministry. Let this first fruit offering 2020 be the very beginning of how you give always and all things towards the Father 
and his Christ, the Lord. God bless you. Learn more and sow your first fruit offering for the year 2020 at www.openyoureyespeople.com www.openyoureyespeople.com Our mailing address is P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas 78154. God richly bless you. Happy New Year. Bye-bye.